would say it's a little dated going back to your question um and i this just came to me is the the over use of the word fag on the movie it's like used like three or four times and i don't think that would sit well with people now if they use that word mm -hmm. um because they're kind of referring to like the music when they're getting beat up by the um, disco guys, or the disco guys use it. They say well, fag makeup. Yeah. And then, um, and then, uh, something about like being faggoty or something like that. Uh, so I don't think that's, that would fly now. Yeah. It's, uh, Hawk says that to Jam because Jam says something like he, you know, how he's like the softy of them. <laughs> yeah. He's like trying to reason, and Hawk's like, "Shut your faggoty ass yeah. mouth!" Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even though it, it's like makes the movie like feel like it is in the late seventies, I don't think people would like that so much. If it if it was released now, they mm -hmm. would. I think that would be all over the internet. Like, did you see how many times that word was used? Mm -hmm. um, so that's the only th reason that um, I it, think it, that element of it wouldn't stand. Um. I've always justified that, uh, not to say that it is right, but with the the fact that that's how a lot of people view, like us and sub, mm -hmm. you know, subculturists, I guess, mm -hmm. or whatever. They they don't understand it, so they throw out hate or mm -hmm. they spew hate. So in that, um, I guess, in that regard, it's it's kind of just being brutally honest mm -hmm. because I'm sure Kiss did get that a lot back then too yeah, the from makeup, guys yeah. who were and then you know jealousy and mm -hmm. um yeah so but I totally understand your point though oh but, yeah and I'm not because um, we're so we're PC now I feel like a lot of stuff is that's that's why I mentioned like there would be tons of articles about this if this had been released now and even if it was this funny people would still be stuck on this like word so um so I think it was released at the right time mm -hmm. um and if it had been released now I don't think those words would have been made the cut at all yeah so uh that's pretty interesting but another interesting thing that I had to share was that I've actually seen Kiss Really, I have not. I, <laughs> I always miss them for some reason. And it was freaking awesome. Um, I saw them maybe like three years ago. and um, Was it with Nancy? It was with my sister, Nancy, um, my two nieces, who are really big KISS fans. The, and The chubby KISS army. Yeah, the chubby KISS army, Abby and Lou. And... Uh, my partner Tim was there too, and he actually got so wasted he fell asleep through kiss. <laughs> Shout out to Timmy. <laughs> yeah, man, partying hard, partying hard, so hard he missed the band. Um, was he upset? I have to ask that. Uh, he. So we were getting uh, harassed by the security guards who, for some reason, don't want you falling asleep during their concerts. Um, so. So, yeah, we had to pretend he was up at some points, and so, but he doesn't remember, I don't think, anything, but I'm sure he's happy he was there. And well, so, was say, he like, just, like, chilling, like, standing, he but was, sleeping? Like, yeah, like, chilling and, like, sitting down and, like, having his head up, but, like, not his eyes open. Oh, it was, it was fun times, for sure. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's, that's kind of my connection, too, to, I know, part poor Timmy <laughs> but that's my connection to the movie I love Kiss and I'm happy to have seen them but I can't imagine like or I can't imagine what it was like to see them in the late like, 70s in the like, prime oh yeah. man I that would have been too crazy like way too crazy for me um so that's fun nice yeah um other things that I kind of that came up um, as I was watching um, the the movie, so all four of them have like these storylines that branch out, and they're all very similar, even though they're like feel like they're so different, but they all like hook up with a girl or kiss a girl, and like in some way do make themselves feel better for losing these tickets. Mm -hmm. But um, I wanted to know, like, what's your favorite story? Because, I mean, we can say, oh, like, this is our favorite character, but, like, 
their storylines are so outrageous. Like, which one would you say is, is the most outrageous of all four? Um, it's out, okay. Mine, my favorite is outrageous, but I love it because it was kind of smart writing. So, like I said, my favorite character is Lex, right? Mm-hmm. And in the beginning of the movie, he makes a joke about he's like, "Oh, the only thing I hate." more than a Stella is is dogs. A, is the dogs or whatever right which um for some reason I didn't ever remember him saying that until we watch this now and as you go into his like basically like how he kind of uh resolves things or right before the concert he um he's trying to find his his mom's car so that his life doesn't get ended later. <laughs> um, yeah, what is it like a Volvo? Yeah, I think so. Something yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, so he finds like these dudes in the, this chop shop or whatever, and then he's attacked by these dogs, and then he finds this common ground with these dogs, even if it's in a in like in a silly way, because he just takes the time to play with them. And from that moment on, he he makes this connection with the dogs, and it's almost like he's like, oh, dogs aren't so bad. And they become, like, uh, the tool that he uses to get, not only to get his car back, but um, uh, the character, what was it, like... Uh, the Natasha ca- Leon, the, the girl? Yeah, the girl who they pick. So when they have, like, the altercation with the disco guys in the, or earlier in the film... Um, the girl, the one of the girls that they're with gets mad because they're being bullies and leaves, and then they end up picking her up mm-hmm. later. But when the car is stolen, she's supposedly sleeping in the back seat. So, um, they so the the chop shop dudes had kidnapped her and the and took the car. So he uh, subsequently um, gets his car back and rescues the uh, the Stella, whose name I forget at the moment and um they kind of uh you know he becomes her kind of like white knight or whatever if you will and then he says goodbye to her like they don't go she doesn't go to the show with him no she's going to disco inferno yeah, remember still, yeah, and still. her name was christine like christine <laughs> christine going to disco inferno i know the, yeah. no disco's inferno or what did he <laughs> no, say more like disco's in yeah <laughs> Man. Just the one-liners in, in that movie, there's, it's just so quotable. That's, like, what it is, too. Yeah, it's so, che- it's, like, cheesy, but in the classic way, like, this movie is tight, you know? No, yeah, definitely. And I think when we were watching it, we were, like, finishing some of the sentences, and, like, it's just so memorable, like, some of these, like, like outrageous things that they get themselves into. Um, but at the end, I really do feel like, there's only two that like kind of save the day and it's one of them is jam because he has this great idea of like let's kick each other's ass yeah which helps him and yeah. two is a uh, trip who like sees his bullies <laughs> or the people who beat him up for his wallet and this money and you know their faces when he's playing along with this like they, they stole my wallet like it's fucking priceless like what the fuck, dude? So they they pretty much saved the day. So and then you don't kind of expect that at all. Mm-hmm. Like you don't expect them to. It comes for uh, full circle. So uh, maybe things aren't exactly how the characters wanted it to be, but they still, um, you know, get to do what the whole movie was about, which is uh, basically they take this journey to see Kiss and to to you know feel that energy of this live show Mm -hmm. no yeah it's definitely up there with one of my uh favorite movies and just like those kind of movies that you want to that you quote and that you remember really specific scenes from Mm -hmm. so that's always fun but Uh, it never i feel like it never really gets boring no, it never gets boring are you serious especially because it's so fast-paced it's really it's like an hour and 30 or hour 20 something it's the perfect timing and i feel like it, it jumps right into it too like the scene with uh, the mom burning the tickets 
that has to be like 15 minutes into the movie mm-hmm. that like it just there's no the pacing is boom 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 yeah boom. it's right there it, it makes total sense um i think it's so symbolic that she's burning the tickets with the cigarette like you know trying to get rid of his vice even though she's got her own vice like exactly. um so it, it's and it's fun it's kind of also plays well with um the props like like i mentioned like their clothing their um hairstyles the uh radio station the store the school it all has that feel of um like late 70s Mm -hmm. um and then like the stretch armstrong like being the gun that trip uses or you know quote unquote gun that he uses behind his jacket at the store um so it's just keeping true to like all those props kind of like play to the storyline's advantage so that's always fun and just something fun we actually i actually have a stretch armstrong i think it's kind of weird and freaky <laughs> i don't like touching it <laughs> yeah they started to redo remaking them yeah recently. uh back you know a couple of years ago they've been re bringing back older toys i feel like yeah, that's just one toy that I'm like, get it away from me, I don't want to touch it, it feels weird. <laughs> oh yeah, like the gel or whatever I just don't inside. like it, I'm always like, get it away from me, like, I don't want to touch that shit. <laughs> um, no, yeah, so I, I think it's a, a fun movie, like I said, it, it does, you know, it can be played now and it, it, it works. Um, my my only comment would be the the word choice word choices that they use in the movie play well to the time and when it was released but I don't think that it would fly now very true That I feel like that a lot of movies are going back and watching these older movies they do have little bits and pieces that wouldn't you're just like oh what like that would never ever happen yeah they used to get away with I, I think it's a trade-off. They used to get away with uh, a little bit more, and now we get a little way a little bit more with, like, nudity or other certain words that, like, I would have never heard on the TV, like, ass, you know? Or I, or I love how gore, especially on basic cable, mm-hmm. like, language is very, like, oh, we can't say that. Mm-hmm. We can't say shit. Like, we gotta bleep it out still. Yeah, we can't say shit, but we can show, like this guy's fucking being decapitated or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I never know where the line ends and where it begins with stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's definitely, you know, the media controlling, well, you know, controlling what we see, but um, there there are certain words and images that are still, you know, taboo and, and people, like, try to, you know, shy away from, but... yeah. I, like I said, it, it just goes back to this movie, came out at the right time, and it was trying to reflect on, you know, a, a period of time that, you know, they were using those words. And, and we might, you know, people might still be using those words, but I think at least here, where we're at in Southern California, like, that word would not fly mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. I agree. Cool. Any, any other notes on this? Uh, well, we haven't done the swan facts, right? Yeah, let's do the swan facts. All right, uh, starting off, um, Jam's hair, they were actually, um, extensions. Oh, okay, I can see that. Yeah, I guess his hair was super short, and they had put in extensions. Some, uh, some scenes, I forget which ones they were, but, uh, a couple of them, they, like, he had a full-on wig, Mm -hmm. and they just hated how it looked, that it looked really bad. So they cut up the wig, and they used those as fake extensions for, for like, a couple of the beginning shoots, and then they put actual extensions in later. Yeah, so his hair looks very similar to Edward Furlong's hair, so it might have just been, like, let's give these guys the same haircut if Edward Furlong's hair is... Real, his real his, hair. His, yeah. That's his real hair, yeah. So it, it makes sense. Um, and it also, Edward Furlong's hair, his character of Hawk in the movie, um, it looks like what your hair would look like when you're growing it out from very short and you haven't cut it, where those layers are just, like, very noticeably far apart. And mm. I, I know this from experience because I've been growing out my hair for the last two years, but um, there is this, like, really awkward stage where you're like I can't really cut it because I'm trying to grow it long but I think 
that Jam's hair was modeled off of. And I may be wrong, but it looks very similar to Edward mm -hmm. Furlong's character. Um, also, uh, I mean... This